Hello everyone and welcome to a new comparison. This time we're having side by side two of the best Android smartphones on the market, the Sony Xperia T and the Samsung Galaxy S3. The Samsung has been around for a couple of months now and was met with enthusiasm by millions of buyers, while the Xperia T will be available in stores soon. So if you want to know which one of the two will be a better pick in the months to come, tag along for the detailed video. <music> The design is probably the most important indicator of a flagship product, and definitely both smartphones we're comparing today are good looking, but once you pick them up, it's obvious that Sony went the extra mile here, getting a slightly curved body on their handset. On the other hand, the Galaxy S3 is just a slab of plastic, with a sheet of glass on top and a strap of metal around those slightly rounded edges. The Samsung SGS3 is also a tad taller and wider than the Xperia T, mainly because of its bigger 4.8 inch screen, but not by much. With a wider footprint, the S3 is also a thinner and lighter smartphone, but most of you will probably not even notice the differences even when handling both devices at the same time. What you'll feel however is a more solid built Sony product, with a grippy matte rear as opposed to the glossy plastic body of the Samsung Galaxy S3. This one is more prone to scratches, but it will also be easier to clean off smudges and fingerprints. And speaking about those rears, you'll notice that the Sony went for a non-removable back panel, while on the Samsung the entire back cover can be torn apart, allowing access to a removable battery plus the micro SIM and micro SD card slots. The plastic panel is however quite flexible, but that doesn't make it necessarily fragile. Also, on the back you'll find the cameras and the speakers on both these phones. And while the cameras are placed towards the top on the two, Sony placed the speaker on the lower part of the Xperia T while Samsung put it closer to the camera lens. Having a look at the front faces, you'll notice that both these handsets sport large screens covered by Gorilla Glass. The Samsung also brings a physical home button, flanked by two capacitive Android standard controls, but on the Sony all these buttons are integrated within the screen. That eats through the canvas, but also makes those buttons more versatile, as they rotate with the apps and even fade completely when not needed. On top of the screen, the two feature a front-facing HD camera, the earpiece grille, a bunch of sensor and the notification LED, although on the Sony this one is so tiny you'll hardly be able to spot it, even at night. On the Sony Xperia T, the microSD and micro SIM slots are placed behind the plastic flap on the right side of the phone, next to the power button, volume rocker and the camera shutter key. And yes, all this make for a crowded left edge and rather poor button layout, as they are placed towards the lower part of that side, which makes them difficult to spot and uncomfortable to use, especially by righties. On the opposite side, there's a micro USB port with no protective cover, and this one is also present on the Samsung Galaxy S3, but placed on the bottom of the phone. Besides this, the two headsets also feature a top mounted 3.5mm audio jack and noise cancelling microphone but the Samsung handset manages to better spread its buttons around the body. The power button on the left side, easily accessible with your thumb, and the volume rocker on the right edge. All in all, neither of these phones are perfect, but nor are they ugly or poorly built. Based on design and build quality alone, I for one would pick this Sony Xperia T, mainly because of its matte plastic back and solid feel. The Samsung, however, is more practical, provides access to the battery and lines the buttons more ergonomically on the side. Also, the S3 is slightly larger, which makes it a bit more difficult to use with your thumb, but it does feel a bit better in the hand than the Xperia T, probably because it's thinner and lighter. While both these devices get massive screens covering their front face, there are many things that set the two apart. First, there's the size, with a 4.7 inch screen on the Sony and a slightly larger 4.8 inch one on the Samsung. Then, the Galaxy S3 uses the excellent Super AMOLED display we've seen on the company's flagships in the past years while Sony goes for a traditional TFT LCD enhanced by their Bravia engine technology. Resolution-wise, they are on par, sporting 720x1280 pixels and a pretty close pixel per inch density of above 300. In practice though, there are noticeable differences between how these screens display the content. Both look good indoors as long as you're watching them straight on, but the Galaxy S3 comes with a superior contrast ratio, which makes it a great performer outdoors. Also, the viewing angles are far narrower on the Xperia T when compared to the Super AMOLED competitor and that makes images and colors fade away when viewing the phone from the sides. On the other hand, the Galaxy S3 uses a pentile matrix. This should give an edge when it comes to sharpness to the Sony Xperia T, but since both displays feature over 300 pixels per inch density, it's extremely hard to distinguish pixels even when looking at the screen from very close distance. 
All in all, both displays will satisfy the typical user, but if I were to pick one over the other, the Samsung Galaxy S3 has an edge here. So let's move further, but not before showing you some side-by-side -side images on the two phones that will demonstrate how the Samsung SGS3 oversaturates colors a bit and shows less details when, it's com when it comes to dark areas, while the Xperia T displays content a bit more realistically, but also a bit more washed out. Both smartphones ran Android 4.0 Ice Cream Sandwich, both promise an upgrade to Jelly Bean soon and both come with customized user interfaces. Samsung calls its own TouchWiz, while Sony's implementation is called Timescape. When trying to unlock the screens, you'll notice that the Samsung's implementation is more intuitive. You just have to tap and swipe anywhere on the screen and you can also tap on any of the docked apps to quickly launch them, while on the Xperia you're still stick with the standard Android unlocking bar. Once you unlock the devices, you'll find 5 configurable home screens on the Xperia T and 7 on the Galaxy S3, a bunch of docked icons visible all of the time on the bottom of those screens and an array of custom apps and tweaks to the original Android UI. Samsung also adds apps like S-Memo for taking notes and sketching drawings, S-Voice, an alternative to Apple's Siri, and S-Planner which replaces the standard calendar. You'll find more apps and widgets by digging into the app drawer if you access Samsung Apps, the company's own app store. Sony added its own apps and widgets too, but the Android experience is pretty much unchanged. You'll probably enjoy the mini apps that allow you to control the calculator, timer, note and voice recorder apps without having to launch them via widgets that can be moved around the home screen. Sony also allows you to change the graphic scheme of the UI, something not possible with TouchWiz and tweaks the notification and multitasking panels while bundling a bunch of apps meant to bring Sony's vast collection of content in front of their users. When it comes to performances, here's where the Samsung Galaxy S3 shines. That happens mainly because of the quad-core Exynos CPU running at 1.4 GHz helped by a Mali 400 MP GPU. In contrast, Sony Xperia T has to deal with a dual-core 1.5 GHz Snapdragon Crate CPU and Adreno 225 graphics. Of course, the Xperia T is not slow, but the Samsung Galaxy S3 tends to respond quicker to commands, being a real power horse no matter if you're talking about HD playback, playing games or browsing the web. In terms of raw computing power, Samsung wins most of the battles as well, but the Sony handset trails it close and even manages to outperform it from time to time, as you'll see from the benchmarks. Both devices offer very good audio quality, no matter if we're talking about calls or audio playback with or without the included earbuds. Video playback is excellent in both cases, with the Samsung having a slight edge in terms of compatibility with various codecs used by clips nowadays. In terms of storage, Samsung offers 16, 32 and 64GB versions, while Sony only has a 16GB model, but since you can expand that with the microSD card, I don't think there's anything to worry about here. As for the cameras, I was expecting the Xperia T to clearly edge out Samsung's 8MP shooter with its 30MP monster, but there are areas Sony's has to improve, notably some overexposure problems, which affect both photos and videos that can be alleviated manually though. On the other hand, the shooter is fast and the dedicated camera button comes in handy. Samsung impressed me with virtually zero lag from the time you press the shooter the moment the picture is taken and with the burst mode that can capture 20 full 8 megapixel photos in under 6 seconds, but it tends to oversaturate colors. Here are some samples for you to compare.
Now moving on to the batteries, the Samsung Galaxy S3 features a 2100mAh power, power plant while the Sony Xperia T comes with a slightly smaller 1850mAh battery. In practice, the two are close and the full charge will barely last you throughout the day with standard use on both of them. Still, the Samsung Galaxy S3 is more efficient when watching videos, listening to music or browsing the web. Plus, it has the removable battery that can be replaced with a new one if needed, so the S3 takes the upper hand here. Of course, before we end this clip, we should also talk prices. The Sony Xperia T is not yet available in stores, but rumors claim that it will be cheaper than the other heavyweight Android headsets, and if that's going to be the case, many might forget about its slight quirks and just pick it over the Galaxy S3 or the HTC One X. All in all, both the Samsung Galaxy S3 and the Sony Xperia T are handsets you must consider if you're on the market for a large Android smartphone. The SGS3 has the AMOLED display, the overall friendlier UI and the longer battery life on its side, while the Sony Xperia T feels more solid in hand, is cheaper and packs a slightly better camera. Which one of these suits you better, however, that's up to you to decide. And this pretty much concludes this clip. Thanks for watching and make sure you hit those share buttons and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. And before you leave, I'd love to know one thing. Which of the two do you feel that has the better screen and why? So please leave your replies below and I'll see you all soon.